Hi folks, Black Silk here. I have been out of the loop for quite a while. I apologize for this to my subscribers and to my friend. But I have had a long summer full of business, business, business. In addition of this, my wife and me have bought a house. Yeah, we are moving out of this apartment. In fact, we get the keys to the new house tomorrow. And we are amidst the process of completely packing and wrapping up everything in the old apartment, getting to paint it and stuff. We would not be legally obliged be obliged to do that, but decent people and friendly people just do that. We want uh, to leave the landlady an apartment that was this, as nice as it was as we are. Uh, moved in and uh, yeah normally I would wait to make a video until I would be completely and all settled in but my YouTube friend Ninja XTX check him out link provided below has asked me for a special video and uh, since Ninja XTX in my eyes exceptionally well represents the true spirit of a warrior which means being so stubborn as to never give up and being as intelligent and fluid as to try out whatever it is that works ah uh, so since he represents the warrior spirit that i admire very much i feel obliged to uh, make that requested video you will find out if you check out ninja xtx uh, channel that he is chair bound and uh, he is the first one to tell you that this does not mean he is disabled he will tell you and rightfully so that he is differently enabled and uh, he asked me whether I could show or demonstrate some martial arts drills that can be useful and used for a chair bound person well actually the first thing that came to my mind was to show the first movements of young steel tai chi as i have learned them and as you can see here they can actually be performed in a chair but i doubt that they are very useful for a chair bound person except for health purposes but uh, i don't think that my demonstration would be needed. There are people out there who can demonstrate it far better. And so for health purposes, this might be something worth pondering. I think along lines of more practical self-defense. And I finally opted after seeing some of Ninja XTX videos or rather reviewing them and checking out what the exact range of motion is. I opted for something that is useful for Ninja XTX and everybody else who so every now sits in a chair like in an office chair or like in a bar uh, normally i would demonstrate this in my uh, own office chair because this is the closest thing to a wheelchair that i have to demonstrate in and i want to keep it as close to the scenario that i have been asked for as possible but uh, my office chair is already packed up so this lady here this beauty is the one thing that i'm stuck with and without further ado the one movement out of the internal martial arts that every practitioner of internal martial arts will know, which is rise, drill, overturn, fall. This is, I think, useful for anybody, no matter whether they are chair bound or not. Uh, and this has health benefits as well as tremendous martial applications. So, Note, we have the hands kind of naturally stretched out, so no tiger claw, but also not artificially spread out like this. Rather, what in Tai Chi is called the tiger, uh, the tiger mouth, and with kind of a natural stretch to it. And uh, the base movement and the base rhythm that we want to go into is rise drill. So we have the motion of rise and the motion of Drill. Both together makes rise drill. Note that the elbow starts out a fist away from my rib cage, like in Wing Chun, a bit more out as in Wing Chun. And while we go for the rising motion, just look for what my elbow does. This is the motion my elbow does. And uh, my forearm doesn't do a great many things except for the turning motion. If 
the elbow motion, in other words, my upper arm, moves like this. I have this angle, which is slightly more than 90 degree. You know that optimum angle between 90 degree plus and 130 degree, where our arm is really strong. We keep it in that angle. The elbow rises and we do this turning motion and we have rise drill. We can have rise drill only so far. We can have rise drill above our head. So there is no prescription what's the right thing. If we start to learn the motion, we start about heart level with the hand and about a fist goes in between my elbow and my wrist and it is a bit out of my shoulders for learning purposes. Later on we can do it from here for learning purposes, it would be above this part. So, and hands on the heart height. So, rise drill. And now the overturn means the hand turns back. And now the elbow stays where it is and the forearm falls. And now the elbow goes back and the cycle repeats itself. There we have it, rise drill. Overturn, fall. Note that this is a, f a motion. If you understand music, then you will see that there are potentially four tacts. You can have rise drill, overturn, fall as one count. You can have rise drill as one count and overturn, fall as one count. You could also have rise drill, overturn, fall as a four count. So there is a lot of variations in this. This thing is incredibly deep and incredibly useful. You could also use the rise drill motion like this where actually the elbow, look the elbow is slightly rising but the lower arm is going down. It would still be counted as rise drill. Resembling a kind of a bonsai from Wing Chun. Overturn resembling a bit of a dance hall, fall. And you have this motion that we know from Wing Chun Dan Chi. So, the rise drill overturned fall. This is how you perform the motion. And note, you can perform it on the high ground, on the middle ground, and on the low ground. Now, what I recommend as a drill that you can repeat for as long as you wish is rise, turn, over, rise, drill, over, turn, fall. One, two, three. Beginning of the drill. Note, we have overcuts. So, one, overcut, I'm above this arm, overcut, one, two, three. Now, I have a turning motion, rise, drill, undercut, rise drill, so we have rise drill, overturn fall. I have rise drill when I'm turning to my right and overturn fall when I'm turning back to the center.